The Evolution of Medusa by Lindsay Boyer. Few images from Greek mythology are as instantly recognizable as the Gorgon Medusa. She is most often associated with images of a woman's disembodied head with snakes for hair and a piercing gaze. Her role as a petrifying monster in the story arc of the hero Perseus is well known and has been revisited in various pop culture settings. But who was Medusa before Perseus? How did she evolve from a sharp-toothed goddess feared by Odysseus himself to a beautiful but passive figurehead? Was she always a monster? Or has she always been beautiful? Prior to the rise of the Olympian pantheon, Medusa was a culmination of Neolithic Indo-European and Near Eastern deities. The association of birds and snakes with birth and death goddesses is widespread, with examples from Egypt, Assyria, Crete, and beyond. Classics and archaeology professor Miriam Robbins Dexter has written extensively on these connections. Perhaps most compelling are the similarities between Medusa and the Babylonian demon Humbaba. Like Medusa, he's shown frontally, a rarity in Greek art, with a wide mouth and staring eyes, often as just a head. Like the Gorgon, he has the dual nature of protector and destroyer, and his head continues to hold power after his death. Humbaba is also frequently portrayed in the bent knee or Neolaufen pose. Early Greek literature tied the Gorgon directly to the underworld, though in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey she is nameless. He describes her visage on the shield of the warrior Agamemnon, and therein was set as a crown the Gorgon, with ferocious face, with dreadful glance, and about her terror and flight. A shield strap of silver was attached to it, and there also was coiled upon it a dark blue snake, there's no mention of her murder by Perseus, but Homer does describe her visual ties to the goddess Athena. She threw the dreadful tasseled aegis about her shoulders, crowned at every point with terror, violence, and strife within, adorned with the monstrous image of the Gorgon's head, grim and awful emblem of aegis-bearing Zeus. The visage of the monstrous Gorgon is widely used by the ancient Greeks as an apotropaic symbol, the hero Perseus being conspicuously absent in most iterations. Medusa adorned temples like the one in Corfu, as well as grave markers, roof tiles, and armor. She appears on countless pieces of pottery and on drinking cups for a more humorous effect of startling the person drinking from them. It is in Hesiod's Theogony, where the figure of the Gorgon is connected to the name Medusa, which means ruling one. Written as a genealogy of the gods in roughly 700 BC, Theogony is the first text to connect Medusa and Perseus. And again, Ceto bore to Forcus the fair-cheeked gray eye, and the Gorgons who dwell on the other side of the glorious ocean in the most remote land towards night, Sitheno and Urale, and Medusa suffering miseries. She was mortal, but the two sisters were immortal and ageless. With this woman lay Poseidon. When Perseus cut off her head, both great Chrysor and the horse Pegasus leapt forth. Notably absent, is any mention of snake or bird-like features. In 500 BC, the poet Pindar refers to Medusa in terms that acknowledge both her beauty and her terror. Perseus slew the Gorgon, and he returned bearing her head, dappled with locks of serpents, and bearing a stony death. The head of the beautiful-cheeked Medusa was carried off by the son of Danae. Snakes are firmly associated with Medusa and her Gorgon sisters now, including a description of her as beautiful in the same historical context that names Gorgons as terrifying is particularly interesting. 
Is her beauty part of her terror or an attempt to humanize her? Human-animal hybrids occupied a particular space in the Greek mythological order. Animal features marked a being as other, foreign, and potentially threatening. Wings, tails, and fangs are all used to denote a character from outside the realm of humans and civilization. The fact that numerous monsters are both therianthropic and female is indicative of the patriarchal nature of Hellenic society, one determined to overpower the goddess-focused traditions of its ancestors and Near Eastern rivals. It is worth noting that the more present the hero Perseus becomes, the more human, and thus more easily conquered, Medusa becomes. Her tusks and occasional beard disappear, though her wings and a few snakes remain to remind viewers of her status as a monster. Contemporary discourse explores the connections between this shift in gender roles, as well as the aesthetic tastes of the classical period. The Greeks equated physical beauty with goodness of character, and despite Medusa's role as villain, a beautiful portrayal of a monster was preferred over an ugly one. The first portrayal of a beautiful Gorgonia, that is, an item with just the head and face of Medusa, is thought to be the Medusa Rondinini. 19th century archaeologist Adolf Furtwängler established a chronological hierarchy for the various portrayals of Medusa that has held up well through a century of academic scrutiny, the archaic, the middle, and the beautiful. He dated the Rondinini to the late 4th or early 5th century BC. However, if the Rondinini originated in the 5th century BC, as Furtwängler believed, it would predate other versions by roughly 100 years. Contemporary scholars suggest that it is a Roman copy of an earlier sculpture, citing first century artists' predilections to look to the classical past for inspiration. Like her predecessor at Corfu, the Rondinini Medusa was likely designed as a votive fixture, a monumental sculpture for reminding worshippers that they were stepping into the presence of divinity. Perhaps in this way, she still retains some of her Neolithic powers. The beautification of Medusa continued through the Romantic and Neoclassical eras, and modern analyses of her story and image are abundant, from Freud to feminist academia. Some readers identify with her status as a victim, some with her rage. Whether one sees her as a goddess, a monster, a victim, or some combination, it's clear her legacy will continue to hold viewers in her thrall.